Ryan Elgig. Hi. And um, about like five minutes ago, I started to like really feel the like nervous twitchy thing in my hands. And um, since I'm going to spend some time talking to you all about solidarity and relationality, I was hoping that we could spend the next 20 seconds and you just turn to somebody next to you or behind you and just introduce yourself. about my role in this is how I'm helping to create those conditions. 
So uh, that means a lot of times we're behind the scenes stuff of trying to hustle money. It means trying to find a TP with four days notice uh, on the East Coast. And, uh, not easy. Um, it means trying to get into Hillary's different offices under different like disguises. Um, you know, and uh, right. So it means a lot of the behind the scenes work. Um, so the way that sort of this. The way that I conceived of this action, right, is that we have the young people at the center and we also have the young people sort of at the, uh, they're the container, right, that hold everything. Um, and then I brought in five of my community members, so queer women, white, indigenous, black, mixed race, and Latinx. Um, we also had an elder, actually, so uh, that was really cool. Um, to, so we have this whole kind of like queer girl squad um, to do the action coordination for these young people. And so the way that I sort of see this as the, the action logic of it, right, um, is that the young people just needed this moment to step into, okay? And that they then had the opportunity to make all the decisions, they made all the tactical decisions about this. When we thought about how we were gonna take that building, they made the decisions about, you know what, we're gonna go on this march, we're gonna have a breakaway unit in the front, okay? That's the team, that we call the TP team. Okay, that also had the, the round dance leader marshals, right? Um, and so that they made the decisions about how that was going to happen. Okay, so um, I just like feel like so much talking about it, um, and and I want to push back on the idea that that statement didn't mean anything because that was the first thing Hillary Clinton said about DAPL, about Standing Rock. And the thing actually that really breaks my heart is she didn't say Standing Rock in it. She said the tribes, okay? But what she did say is that representatives from the tribes came to deliver me a letter, and you know this is a response to that. And we would not have received that statement if it wasn't for the 10 young people who came here to do that. now this morning um, so you can check that out when you leave here um, Danny said you know there was a there was a real sense of balance yesterday okay there was a sense of this huge loss and violence and also that was a victory and they really claimed that as a victory as wrenching as it was for them to walk up and to deliver that letter and for that letter to be denied right right okay so Tokata Ironize who's 13 years old went up to deliver that letter and she told me afterwards and she was crying and her tears were on the letter. So that letter to Hillary Clinton actually had her tears in it. And she told me afterwards, she said, they, they looked at me like I was a different breed. So even within that, even within that experience of violence and also 15 minutes before we took those doors, they found out from their relatives that the camp was being evacuated. So they walked through, they did not give up, and they were like, we're just gonna put the teepee up in less than two minutes. And so, so I really have been sitting with that sense of balance, and um, it's something that I'm also really thinking about in terms of what it means to have the privilege of being able to step in and to step out, okay? And as somebody who visited Standing Rock, and was there for 10, 11 days and then came back, and who's also thinking about going again, I'm really thinking about what balance means in terms of my arrival there and my departure there. So there's like this whole debate right now about allies versus accomplices, and I think that that material, which is in the syllabus, um, is useful in the sense that it gets us talking to each other. I think that where I sort of break away with that material is that, and as Anne really eloquently laid out for us, that being a settler is not an identity. Being a settler is a structural position, and people move through that position differently, okay? And as somebody who has kind of a converse experience to Anne, where I read a lot of time, I've worked with indigenous communities for a decade, I read a lot of times as indigenous. So I have this reverse passing that I'm also trying to navigate. So, um, you know, and being an ally, being an accomplice, right, I think that those have become identities in ways that don't necessarily serve us. And so, you know, sometimes you gotta use the language just because it's hard to sort of 
you know, define the radical relationality of love that's going to dismantle settler colonialism, and sometimes you just have to use the word ally. But I really think about it in terms of solidarity because solidarity is a practice. And if we're trying to uh, meet and confront and take down settler colonial colonialism, uh, which is an ongoing structure, right? We can't meet that with like a sense of being, oh, this is who I am, and it's fixed. Right? We need to meet that with an ongoing practice. And solidarity, you know, like, spoiler alert, I think we need a lot more models of what solidarity looks like. And the only way we're going to get there is by falling down and fucking up and getting back up and trying again. And, you know, to be an ally, to be an accomplice, right? There's no uh, indigenous identity. Right? We know that. So, you know, to think about who we're being accountable to, who we're in relationship with, right? And so, five minutes, okay. I did like a third of what I was gonna do. Um, I'm a slow talker, so, uh, okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why I went to Standing Rock. So as a trainer, I'm sort of looped into this national network of like four higher troublemakers, and so I went to Standing Rock because I was asked to go to actually corral white folks, uh, you know, supporters and visitors in general, but particularly white folks who were taking up a lot of space and time and putting a lot of emotional labor onto indigenous folks who were trying to winterize their camps, who were trying to do direct actions, who were trying to do ceremony with their questions about what's going on here. So, <laughs> and I got a sweat. So, you know, and I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm being reductionist for dramatic value, but, uh, uh, you know, but there's a pattern, right? And I call, the way that I think about this pattern, and I saw it so much at Standing Rock, and I also wanted to say before I talk about the pattern, and I probably only have like two minutes, that, the, that there are a lot of folks who are trying solidarity as a practice and who are messing up and are trying again and are really holding the sense of relationality. Right. Um, so I wanted to say that there was uh, there's this pattern that I see. Right. Coming in, the first the first step is assessment. Right. Of a, I, they don't really have a good analysis of corporate power here. The next step is uh, pro proscription. What they really need is a website where they have their corporate power analysis up for everyone to see. And then the third step is departure, right? So what they should have is a website, and I'm bouncing, and I'm not going to get around to, to implement it. And I think actually that that's, you know, and I don't mean to pass this in a nefarious way, but I think that even well-meaning, you know, people who want to who want to support see like openings or voids but are not privy to the organizing, are not privy to the hundreds of years of indigenous resistance and resurgence, right? And are like making assessments and then making prescriptions and then not sticking around to implement them. So I probably only have a minute left. And so what I Thanks. So what I want to say in those two minutes is to really so we're all talking about standing with standing wrong. What does that mean? What, if, what are you doing to stand with Standing Rock? And I was actually going to hope to like pull, pull up a couple of people, you know, and take answers or to that. But I'm going to take this time for myself and uh, just say, just say um, that there are here are a few things that uh, uh, that I'm going to offer as ways to stand with Standing Rock. Okay. So because I think that there's a lot to be said for social media, and there's also. Uh, uh, in terms of relationality, we build relationships by doing things together. And so we build relationships through action, and through action we get to accountability. So uh, so here are some things that you can do. Uh, you can go to Standing Rock, and I think go with intention, go with honesty, and think about what you're saying. Are you saying to people, oh, I have to go home, or I can't stay? Because think about whether or not you can actually stay and what you're choosing to do, right? right? And it's fine, no judgment there, no shame. Everybody has lives that they're living, right? But to really hold that, that uh, the privilege of being able to step in and step out. Uh, the other thing that you can do um, is you can do actions here, right? Um, we put together the TV thing in about five days. Um, you know, but you know, we heard about six people shutting down Wells Fargo. So there are things that you can do here with people you already have relationships with, right? Um, you can donate money, and the thing I'm going to say about donating money 
is that um, as somebody who tries to raise money, people feel uneasy about giving money to social movements because it's like, well, what's going to happen in a couple months? Where is it going to go? Okay, I get that, but I will tell you, having been at Standing Rock 10 days ago, that all the sleeping bag donations, all the tent donations that are going there, they're trying to get rid of them. They were sending them to the Navajo Nation because they were like, it's warmer there, we can't use these tents. So I think that, that solidarity also looks a lot like trust, and trusting that people know how to use the money that's best for them, like in ways that work for them. Because right now, what I just did today was wire my friend money so that he can pay his bills back home, right? So, because, so that he can continue to be there. And that, I think, looks a lot different than how we think about uh, you know, donating to the movement. Um, so those are a couple things, and then I'm, I'm definitely over time. Um, you can also educate each other and create educational materials. Um, and I want to just say in terms of resources, pointing you to other resources, so we started this Facebook page. There's nothing up there yet, but there will be in the next couple of days. It's called Standing Rock Solidarity Training. It's on Facebook. So what I did when I was out <coughs> at camp was I did direct action trainings and I did these kind of what I'm calling how to come correct trainings. Because um, like anti-oppression sounds so boring and although it should be exciting. And uh, so I also built these documents that would be resources for people who are coming into camp to take that labor off of people who are holding the front lines. So those documents, I just have to figure out how to get them up there. So those documents are gonna be up there. There's also the possibility of me doing a come correct training probably next Friday for people who are thinking about going out to Standing Rock. But I wanna get those resources up there um, so that they can be spread. Am I done? Okay. <laughs>